a plane just crashed onto a onto car the highway. on a highway. Hello aviators, welcome back to the Finer Points. I want to talk with you guys about a video that I saw recently where an aircraft had an engine failure and landed literally on top of a car. Let's actually take a look at that video to start. Let's just look at that and I want to tell you before we watch this, nobody was injured. So everybody in the aircraft was okay, everybody in the car was okay. Uh, but this is the way it started. We see these cars going down the freeway at night, minding their own business, listening to their music, going about their day, and the aircraft comes out of nowhere and literally lands right on top of the car. All right, so what this made me think of immediately, and I'm happy that everybody was okay here, but what it made me think of immediately was back in 2004, not too long after I started teaching, we had a similar incident in Concord, California, where a Bonanza took off from Concord, had an engine failure, and glided to a landing on the 680 freeway. Now, in that circumstance, the pilot was okay, walked away. However, there was a little girl on her way home from a soccer game that got her leg cut off because the prop moved through the side of her minivan. And I always felt like that was deeply unfair and that it deserved a moment of reflection for all of us to think, what would we do in that circumstance? We, after all, are choosing to be up there. We're choosing to fly up above everybody. We don't drop things on people, particularly ourselves in the airplane. I'm gonna talk about some strategies there that are really close to my heart, stuff that we teach in our ground school app. But before I do that, I'll throw the comment section a bone. There are times where there are really no good options. It's important that you're always playing that game with yourself. Where would I go if my engine failed? What would I do? And sometimes the answer to that is, I would be kind of screwed right now, but at least you're aware of it. And hopefully that would cause you to move to a better position where you might have some options. My feeling about that, however, is when it comes to other people, again, we chose to be up there. So if you really don't have any options, I would sacrifice, I'd go, I'd throw myself on my sword. I'd basically hit something inanimate before I attempted to go onto a freeway with cars or onto a playground with children or a field full of athletes and that kind of thing. I'd rather fly into the trees, but there's a lot of room in between, okay? There's a lot of defensive flying tactics that I don't see pilots using. The most obvious are power off approaches to the runway, always keeping yourself in a position where you could, if you needed to, glide to the runway. And this isn't just important to help you stay safe near runways, this will give you confidence gliding into any confined space so you don't have to land on cars. Last May, I had a client coming flying here to Nevada County to, to, to see me, to work with me, and he had an engine failure on the base leg which resulted in a fatal accident. Now his altitude on base leg was 100 feet above runway elevation. That's not very defensive flying. This is why we teach this in the ground school app right here in the flight chapters of the private course. We teach you how to do 180 degree power off approaches. Uh, it's not on the private ACS, it is just a good smart habit and a fundamental skill for defensive flying. You've gotta remember, proper distance from the runway, power change at the beam position, fly the air speeds that you were taught to fly. That's the first thing I work on with commercial students is, hey, remember those pattern procedures you've been blowing off? So that's critical, that's step one, that's the building block and everything is built on top of that. So here I am in a Cessna today, I'm on the opposite side of the aircraft from the runway that we're landing on. So uh, I'm gonna put the runway halfway through my strut. That's the proper distance when you're on the opposite side. So let's see if I'm doing the right thing. Yeah, it's about, and now we're not landing on the big runway over there with the precision markings. We're landing on the small one, two five left. And we're gonna say that the first taxiway is the spot we wanna hit. That's the third runway stripe, essentially. Now we're gonna aim for some point in front of that, right? That's our, that'll be our aiming point. We'll call those the numbers, because if we aim for the spot we wanna hit, we're gonna float about 400 feet past it. That's if our speed's on target. So the aiming point are the numbers. Here we are, a beam. I'm gonna pull power to idle. Below 110, flaps 10, and the first speed I'm looking for is 85 on a downline, so I just set that. Now, we go all the way out to the 45, and we're gonna be a little conservative here. I'd rather, like a sculptor, I'd rather shed off altitude than come up short, so we're gonna go, we're gonna turn a little early, all right? As we turn early here, we're inside the white arc, flaps are going 20, eyes outside the airplane. We're trying to slow up to 75 knots. We have no carb heat, gas is on both. Undercarriage, down and welded, mixture's full rich. No traffic on final. All right, now here's 75 knots. I'm using the geometry of my approach here. I'm turning, because I'm a little high, I'm turning a little late. 
this, and I'm making sure that I have 65 knots of speed. All right, we got our speed on target. The numbers are the aiming point. So when some spot like that tan line disappears underneath my cowling, it's time for me to round out. All right, there's my round out. And now I'll transition. I'm trying to hit the third runway stripe. There's one, there's two, and there, my friends, is three runways. Stripes. <laughs> all right, so the three tools that you have to spend are your flaps, first of all, the second, the approach geometry, the, the geometry of your approach, the base leg. That's why they call it the key position. If you're low, you just turn directly toward the numbers. If you're high, you extend it and square off the turn to final. Don't be afraid of a steep bank if you release the nose and let the nose fall. In that steep bank, you're not going to stall the airplane. Your stall speed increase is nominal. If you're re releasing the stick, you're not going to fall and stall. All right, aviators, that's all for this episode of The Finer Points. Remember that I do show up every Friday now in the Ground School app as part of office hours. Uh, so when you subscribe, you get all the courses, full features, plus office hours, all for one price. You can get a free three-day trial by clicking the link in the description. Uh, make sure you leave a comment below if there's a video you'd like to see. Uh, hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Uh, make sure you hit that little alert bell so you actually get notified when we upload. But most importantly, until I see you guys again, be safe and fly your best.